Hello and welcome. It is 10.30 on a Friday night and we are going to delve into Untold Chronicles, The Gardens of Shidakla. Um, hopefully uh, we've got one or two players that have been a little bit under the weather so we are missing one or two but hopefully we will have everybody here. Let us switch across to our setting there and that is all looking good hopefully you can hear and see me now thanks very much for joining us into chat whilst we are waiting for people to load up we will say a big hello to everybody who has joined us in chat who is potentially going to be watching us on video on demand and on youtube and say a big thank you to our players as well um, we also need to say uh, a big thank you, as we always do, to Hero Forge, who um, have been very kind and generous to allow us to use their images from their website. Um, so, we've got a lot to get through tonight as our adventurers uh, descended down into the very gardens itself um, but before we do that many of the character images are designed using hero forge a wonderful way to create your own custom miniatures and get them 3d printed you can uh, find them at www.heroforge.com please note that anything mentioned on the stream may not represent the view or beliefs of hero forge a sky castle studios llc product and as you can see our fine heroes here um we've got three of them tonight we've got uh edius uh time Merin time menorith and uh d dino dino dinobrian dinobrian uh theon is away at the moment um cannot make it a little bit under the weather so we wish him well hopefully he recovers uh soon um don't forget it is untold chronicles so you can use your hap points your heroic action points for re-rolls should you have any left uh without further ado let us introduce our players and then go straight into the action so uh dino brian um you first yep hi i'm james um yeah that's me yeah hello james welcome uh, you're playing a uh, very, uh, very average, grey, mundane cleric. Um, yes, nothing unusual at all. Nothing unusual at all. And then we move to Ty. Uh, hey, I'm Doug, uh, Doug Force in the Discord uh, channel, and I'm playing Ty, who is an Aladrin bard. Perfect. And last but not least, Idius. You might be on mute, Edius. Hi, I'm Pete. I've got too many buttons on my uh, <laughs> set of windows I got open, and uh, I'm playing Edius, who's a great big human fighter. Perfect. So, um, what a journey. Uh, not a pleasant one. It took them three months to travel from sort of Europa down via scraplands even further south to the icy icy wastes where uh, the promised land has uh, been announced these gardens these unbelievable beautiful verdant place in the middle of the ice caps many people even making the journey were unsure that they truly existed uh, there they picked up a guide and made the very long and treacherous journey. Uh, not only was the environment out to uh, uh, kill them, it discovered that their guide was some kind of hideous hybrid between plant and flesh, wearing the face of a human, uh, but underneath fibrous, uh, twitching green and white tendrils uh, trying to infect our heroes here and certainly infecting the rest 
of the explorers and travellers on this exodus to these gardens of Shidakla. They uh, uncovered this threat and dealt with it, abandoning the uh, dead and moving forward, reaching perhaps beyond the point of no return, the point that it's not safe enough to go back, leaving really the only choice to go forward. Uh, things were looking bad. Even the nature of Ty uh, began to change as he began to adopt the winter season. But they were fortunate, maybe lucky, to see and reach the foothills of these titanic mountains stretching far into the sky. And here they eventually uncovered an entrance as they descended down, the entrance itself was beautiful, uh, uh, of a um, of a light that they had never seen before. This beautiful uh, fungal uh, garden, jungle, uh, not far down from the ice, and they headed into it, seeking refuge from the environment and also potentially aid from whatever lurked down there. Uh, aid they did not get though, as they were assaulted by a number of plant-like creatures, um, uh, veggie pygmies, and whilst they fell rapidly to their blade, it seemed that they had a uh, an ability to re-knit their fibrous, um, bodies together and rise again. Um, eventually, fire was used to ensure that um, they did not get back up. Uh, fair battle. As they caught their breath, though, they began, began to be approached by another creature. Different in design this time, white of body, uh, sort of spherical shapes coming from it and as it shuffled wobbly forward uh, spores kind of span out of its body uh, it begins to approach you and it doesn't really have a mouth or vocal cords but in your heads you hear a voice in the first language that you would have learnt, whatever that is. And it is the same message. Uh, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't hurt me. I'm, 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 uh, uh, I mean you no harm. That is incredibly hard to believe. Uh... And it wobbles back a little bit um, and spores nervously spill out of its body again. Donovan uh, certainly has a sphinx of it of his long bow. Yeah. Kind of, kind of not looking at all friendly. Uh, uh, Edius will uh, say in giant, where have you learned the language of my people? Uh, Are the giants here? Again, it doesn't seem to echo any sounds from it but in your head you hear again uh, I, I um, uh, my kind we uh, we touch minds we touch minds it is my mind you can hear oh well uh, th that's incredibly interesting uh, uh, who are you uh, uh, I do not know what you mean. Oh, um, uh, well, uh, what, what, what do you want with us? Uh, to, to help. Oh. Well, I mean, it's been a while since anyone's genuinely wanted to help us, sir. 
I mean, that's not. Uh, there is bad things happening here. Very bad things. And uh, it is it is wrong. Uh, we are we are in the minority. Uh, it is uh, allow me to try and uh, try and show, try and explain. Uh, and again, kind of nervously, there are whiffs of spores that surround him that sort of come out. And he kind of wobbles just a little bit more forward. I look very apprehensive here. No. Do you look, does it look anything like, um, like the kind of disease infested people we saw before? Like the same kind of fungal nature? No, it's, um, as I say, there's a large spherical um, sort of ball that kind of a lot of the spores are coming out. And then there are a couple of sort of uh, more spherical. Um, sorry, I'm getting a bit of a uh, banging. Um, um, there's a couple of sort of spherical, spherical sort of uh, balls that form kind of the stem as well. Uh, I mean, it is spores, so pretty much similar. Um, but you can give me nature rolls if you want, or potentially even insight rolls should you want as well. Not particularly inclined to trust any um, sentient fungi now. Yeah, yeah, totally understandable. Um... <laughs> very good um, so uh, with the nature rolls that you've got it, it's difficult these are perhaps nothing that you've seen before uh, tie slightly slightly more information maybe living in the Feywild that you're aware of such things um, it reaches out again and says <sighs> I know that beyond this place, out where you have come, is a place where uh, life, even yourselves, will find it difficult to survive. Um, it is worse here. Uh, there are few of us that... Uh, that follow in the ways of Lux Aya. Uh, most of the others, they follow a much darker path. They follow Zug Timoy. Is this a name that you are familiar with? Uh, uh, I don't believe I've heard it. Um, you can give me a religion or arcana roll, should you uh, should you wish to. Uh, yeah, so that's that's good. Um, so yeah, Ty. Um, Oh, you put yourself guidance on. I was trying to figure out what was what was going on there. So twenty two is really good, um, Dinah Brian, and not so bad you as well. You would have heard whispers in the Feywild tie of uh, this entity, powerful, almost godlike, a uh, demon lord or demon lady. Not really either. Um, sex sexless um lord of fungal growths um a horrifying thing um wicked to the core all about consumption um you can confirm that dino brian you have definitely heard of this abyssal creature and you're also aware that uh, it would do anything to consume and dominate 
quite often using its spores to take over the minds of uh, other creatures to get its own way. Right. Uh, what do you know of the creature called Tikwana? Uh, this is not a name I am familiar with. Uh, uh, but things, servants of Zug Timoy have been sent out to gather. Um, and it kind of tries to think of the correct word. And the only word it can come up with is specimens. Uh, she has plans, terrible plans plans that we, uh, the followers of Luxia, uh, do not agree with. Uh, she draws you here and your kin so that she can uh, make sure that she and her followers are fully prepared Well, that is uh, disconcerting, to say the least. Uh, and you say Luxia, you, you, you follow. Who is Luxia? Luxia is, uh, uh, is everything to us, is, is life, is how we exist. Uh, and tis not Luxia's doing that that she wants this, uh, not at all, which is why there's myself and some other uh, small groups have been trying to help, uh, trying to uh, arrivals like yourself, uh, take you to a place of sanctuary for a while so that uh, the plans of Zugmoy T are, um, are slowed, if not stopped. Although it is unlikely, she seems certain. There is a, a, a madness. She has seen something. Um, she has called for something terrible to happen. I do not feel like being a sample. Oh, sounds absolutely terrible, idiot, sir. And you say you, you have a, a place of sanctuary. I must confess that sounds oh, wonderful after the last few weeks of, of, of our life. How long have these gardens been here? Uh, the gardens have been here our time is different the way that you count it. We live uh, different ages, uh, but in your, and you, you hear, you kind of hear its voice, its mind almost trying to sort of calculate. Uh, we would say that no more than 12 of your moons, uh, she sensed this place, a place of a place of warmth and moisture hidden amongst the desolate cold, a place of uh, secrecy for her to prepare. Uh, I, I knew this place was an insanity. It is beautiful. We, it is uh, Zugti Moy's her plans, her twisting of what they can be. Uh, she spread her spores and tendrils through the uh, shadowless, uh, creating this place uh, beyond. Beyond the mountains, there is the rift and a valley uh, where uh, the heat of the shadowless rises close to the surface to keep the place warm. But 
she plans she knows that time is soon going to be uh, perfect perfect for what she desires she has through her dark divinations determined that the time the stars are right are, are right for what Luxia has shown us and it hurts. It is not pleasant to see. Uh, Zug to me plans to take advantage of the situation of the coming storm. Uh, she has <coughs> seen that the surface world, the bright uh, the surface where the shadowless uh, sits, the surface is, sits upon the shadowless. She has seen that there will be a red tempest. She has seen that bone and sinew, blood and viscera will flow. And this is her time that she wishes to take full advantage off she plans she plans to initiate a blooming whilst chaos and death uh, spill across the entirety of the blight whilst your meat and blood flow and open up it is the perfect breeding ground for for her followers uh, we grow upon death and she has seen the world uh, will be death well I mean that, that that's terrifying <laughs> Indeed, but she wants to ensure the spores that she sends high into the sky so they may drift around the the world, around the bright, are the right spores that they will grow strong on your blood and on your viscera. They will take root and rapidly grow uh, um, that is why she needs samples that is why she has drawn uh, bright here you say there are others that you have taken to places of safety uh, it is how dangerous. many survived the journey a few survive. Most are turned before. Um, Aye. We've uh, seen this. But there have been others that have been taken back. Uh, they look like you. Uh, their clothes, their skin that they wear make you appear make them appear to be you but underneath they are not they are uh, they are devoted to Zugdimoy they are have have been sent out amongst the world to infiltrate to manipulate uh, to prepare for the blooming soon very soon this red tempest will come and as the world is turned red slick with your sap and then she will cause the blooming to be thrown high into the sky and spread 
around the globe. This is not the way of Luxia. This is not what we want. Well, that is very reassuring to, to, to hear. Um, I, I, I mean, this is rather overwhelming. Um, uh, chaps, uh, I mean, what do we do? Well, the sounds of it, we can't trust other people. I see no reason why we can trust this bungle thing either. Keep your eyes open. It will be dangerous. We, the entrance to the gardens proper has more of those and it kind of sort of points with its mind to the veggie pygmies. They're controlled by a more powerful one. Um, you need to prepare yourselves. They uh, they are followers of Zogti Moy. They will see and they will attempt to take you for her. Mm. Pedius hefts his maul, looks at the others, nods his head towards the uh, the torches. Well, we still have some of these. Maybe we should be prepared with them. Yes, uh, yes, it did seem fire was the answer, didn't it? But I think this, he says, hefting his maul again, might be my, my tool. I mean, is this... Um, uh, is this... Is this our problem to solve? Sounds like something terrible is coming. Would warning not be better brought back to the other lands? Oh, Games Master, does Edius know if we have enough food to get home? Uh, no, I mean, you, you don't. You could perhaps try and harvest some stuff here, and if you've got the Outlander feet, you could maybe try and hunt, uh, but it's going to be a dangerous journey back. It could be it could be made, uh, especially if you could harvest some of this stuff that you can see here. Uh, as I say, this place I'll share this picture again, but you know it has potential. Uh, but you would have to cherry pick the stuff that isn't deadly poisonous compared to the stuff that you could eat. Um, Dinobrian so... uh, had the ability to remove potential taint from stuff. Indeed. I will I will make a mention the group of our situation with respect to sustenance. Yes, we are Half hoping that Dunabraham will will mention being able to feed us bland food. <laughs> but but equally also being full aware that, that without any help our only way to survive will be to gain food here and then consider how we get home from that point. We should certainly look to making a pack of supplies from whatever we can find here. And I will purify it. I suggest to both of you, we do not eat anything that has not been purified here. No, no absolutely not. Uh, well, it sounds, uh, sounds incredibly dangerous, whichever route we choose. I have some skill as the outlander, indeed, as the uh, master of games mentions. <laughs> But, uh, yes, I think whether we are involved in this fight or not, we have need of succor here, at least temporarily, while we uh, find our feet for the return journey, if nothing else. It's agreed. We should investigate some more to prepare our supplies. Yes. And I've had a sense of unease as we have been traveling, and I think this this may be one of the reasons why. So, uh, it, it says again, um, you can lurk here. Um, there will be patrols, or if we can fight our way through, 
I can take you to a safer place where we can at least supply you. It is your choice. I will confess, I do like the sound of safe. Well, we appear to all be conscious and in good health. Let us make good time. I assume you guys have in good health. Um, <laughs> for, my, yeah, um, for my bad bedside manner, I assume that you guys, as you're able to talk, are yeah. um, able to walk. Uh, yeah, there's it, a... it is... Go on. has a mere scratch. Mm. Uh, I assume as well that the uh, those temporary hit points from the last battle will have gone now. No. no. Stick around until um, you take a certain kind of rest. Yeah. Oh, great. Amazing. Uh, absolutely, they they do do that uh, unless you get offered greater temporary hit points when they increase. It's a very good sort of skill. Well, uh, should we should we press on then with this uh, uh, kind uh, offer of help uh, as a gesture to this uh, white. Uh, a fungal creature. Aye. Stay close, though. I'll be blind as a bat if those lights go out. Uh, no, I gave you all feeling for a dark vision, actually, that yeah. session. Absolutely. We've got, uh, We've got that for an hour. St stay we'll close, though. Make sure you are present to burn any, any foes. <laughs> Should we uh, uh, carry torches, then? Uh, I think we had... Oh. Everyone share a torch out, definitely. I've got any torches. Yeah, wonderful. Um, I don't know if I've got any torches on us. Um, I do. I, I have. I have a a adventurous pack worth of the ten torches. Um, yeah, I have ten as well. So uh, I have torches. I can pass them out, but I will be wielding my maul with two hands. Ty, do you have any torches? I I do not. No, unfortunately, uh, um, my take um, take four of mine. Oh, yeah, very kind. Um, ah, yes, thank you. Light one now and be ready, I think. Oh, very, very good, yes. I'll light a torch and, and hold it in one hand. You get the joy of being the one who actually has to do the dirty work of the fire. Yeah. While we use our cool abilities. Um, this individual, this ambassador basically says uh, uh, close around the corner is where uh, the king of these things makes his home. Um, uh, be careful. He will be waiting. Get yourself ready for battle. Yes, uh, very well. Well then, um, uh, forward, I suppose. Um, okay, so you begin to move forward. Um, he kind of backs off there. Um, uh, or do you want him to lead you? He just doesn't mind taking the lead. Which way are we heading? He kind of indicates that sort of close round the corner there is um, where um, this king of the veggie pygmies kind of lurks. He says that oh, uh, they do blend into the... Uh, you won't be able to distinguish them from um, from normal... Fun guy. Yeah. Well, we should be on our guard then. And, and... Will, will we will we go with self or shall we try and brazenly uh, march in I, with a pace? I think avoiding the problem, if possible, would be wise. Uh, do you believe we could sneak past them? You could certainly try. I think it is unlikely, though. Uh, they are very 
um, uh, zealous in their duties. Well, then, I suppose there's probably not much to be gained from uh, a stealthier approach. We should probably use haste, Edia, so I think you may be right. You do notice that uh, Dynabrian is not with you at the moment. No. Shit, am I not? <laughs> Where's he gone? <laughs> what am I doing? <sighs> you, um, you're right at the top there. Can you see? Oh. I can't see anything, Andy. No. Um, oh, I'm seeing a picture of um, I'm seeing the picture of the fungal spores. I'm not seeing the map. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, uh, yeah. He runs down. I just don't want yeah. you to start combat with one of you a million miles away. <laughs> um, you must keep your lessons tied. Uh, okay. So um, uh, it is up to you. You can move cautiously. One of you, I believe, has got a torch in. Your hands, so yep. let, us, let us make use of the dark vision for a few minutes. Okay, if one of us is to go up and scout it, um, just to get an eye with our superior feeling for a dark vision and mm -hmm. see what we can see before um, we engage. Let us know if we have um, any good terrain to fight against. Okay, so uh, who wants to do the scouting then? Um... Edius does not have the build of a scout. I, I mean, I'm relatively good at going unnoticed. Hmm. Have guidance. Oh, thank you. So I will hand the torch uh, to Don O'Brien. Yeah. And then I will uh, attempt to sneakily move forward. Give me a stealth roll, please. Uh, with guidance. <laughs> Okay. Uh, no, okay. So, and give me a perception roll as well. Perception. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good. You don't see anything other than what you yeah. can see. <laughs> I will sort of sneak back and say, it "Looks all clear to me." Very well. Hmm. Can't we hold this and fire bow at the same time? Oh, no, it's... yes, of course. Uh, no, 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 no. One yeah, of us must be... do the fire. We can't have one person not doing the fire. I, I, I will I will happily do that, yes. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll take the, uh, the torch back, yeah. No worries. Okay. Well, Speed, then. Indeed. Like, no, Dino Green will um, put his bow away and... Um, Take out a torch as well. I have two torches. Okay. I can hold a, I can hold a torch and do my um, spells, so that's yep. probably for the better. Okay. So um, waiting for you to move forward, really. So uh, one, so... one either side of me. Yeah. Uh, I'll hit them. You burn them. Very good. Yes. Yes. Very good. As you're the uh, major damage dealer, um, come here a second. Well, I mean, oh. I think I have proven to be relatively useful with my dagger, but uh, very well. Ah, you're uh, targeted as well. I mean, kind of ignores that completely. Uh, <laughs> he um, places his hands on um, Ayus's eyes for a second, just above the eyes, mm -hmm. and rubs against them. And you feel slightly more alert as you get advantage on mischief checks. That is very nice. Uh, uh, okay, as you begin to move forward. Oh, wow, I've rolled really badly twice. You basically see um, kind of amongst the vegetation, you see two things. Um, they've basically got plant camouflage and they're being stationary. Um <laughs> They don't think you've seen them, but you have seen both of them with my terrible rolls. Uh, they have obviously seen you, um, so um, you're not going to get sort of surprise on them, but they are waiting to sort of um, wait for you to get closer before they 
they attack. Now, these are slightly different uh, uh, than the other veggie pygmies. One is slightly bigger, um, and the other one isn't uh, a veggie pygmy at all. It's um, a strange kind of plant dog type creature. Um, just so you know. This is like Biz but Big Buzz is the dog-like creature. You kind of zoom down and you can see its face with uh, tendrils. And the other one is King uh, Fly Slime. <laughs> Evius has every intention of just running straight up to it and smacking it as hard as he possibly can with his with his maw. Okay, so does, does that lead us to roll initiative? But yeah, by any yeah. chance. If that if that's the play you're making, yeah, give us initiative roll. And I have advantage on initiative, you say? Yep, just the first one you roll. Um, and uh, I think. Good job. Very nice. Uh, and they they see you sort of start running, and they're going to roll some initiatives as well. Uh, one good one, one bad one. Okay, so we go to the top of the round, and uh, uh, Dino Brian. Uh, Dinobrian, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Dinobrian looks up at the pair of them and is going to cast. It's not actual fire, unfortunately, but um, fairy fire mm. on that area. So it is a. They both succeed. Yeah, and yeah. they sort of shake it off. Uh, that's me done okay big buzz has a speed of 30 and this if you if you focus it on the token it is truly horrifying as it runs forward uh, this body thorny uh, and it's got a terrifying bite as well uh, so, um, I'm I'm going to be I'm going to be reasonable here. I'm going to randomise one to three. It'll be tie. Uh, four, five, and six. It's not. So that's kind of fell lucky as Edius has got a better armor class, I believe, and that is a miss. And then we move to Edius. Uh, yeah. I'm going to take a big hit, a big buzz. Ooh. Time to use that big old maul. Just trying to use the tennis racket to get the thing to come out yeah. and then realize I don't need to do that. Um, I don't think there's anything I have that would give me advantage on this apart from flanking of the creature, which is not a rule we are using in the Untold Chronicles. Exactly. So I'm just going to hit it. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so 22 you hit, uh, not quite a crit, but it's definitely a hit. Um, very I'm nice. trying to remember whether we roll ones and twos with the uh, great weapon fighting style. I believe it is ones and twos, so you can re-roll one of those dice if you wanted to. Okay. I can't remember whether that is that I have to use the one. But I think I probably do. Yeah, I think it replaces it, so it heals by. Yeah. Uh... Okay. Um, anything else you want to do, Idius? Um, I don't think I've used my action surge yet. I don't think we used it in the other fight, but I'm. Uh, did you not have, sure? Have you got a tick off thing on your character sheet? Oh, no, I you don't, have, do you not? You don't have a I thing. I haven't got a thing to ting off. No, indeed, yeah, I have let, now. Let us, let us sort that out. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so... Uh, you've got it once per day, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, there you go. Well, I shall use it now. Bum, 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 bum. Um... And so, therefore, I shall hit, try and hit it again. And you do miss this time as it crashes down. Ah, well. 
a nice try though. Um, with that, we move to Ty. Uh, yeah, be like a ah! as, this, as this thing sort of runs up to him. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try and find a um, picture of it because that is nasty. Uh, thing. Um, oh, I wonder if it's under encounters and. He will, uh, he will shout in its face. You, you, you are an ugly brute, and quite frankly, you are barely worth looking upon. And uh, I will cast vicious mockery. Very nice. Yeah, this is what the creature looks like, like that dog-like oh. thing with fronds coming out. Uh, so you hit it with vicious mockery, and it definitely fails. Uh, we're using the rules that was. Um, um that was a critical fail he rolled a natural one so oh. um you get to roll another d4 on that uh very nice doing a fair oh. amount of damage to it um excellent stuff um, um is me i think yep yeah. uh he kind of oh be careful be careful everybody be careful uh Watch out! That's what it basically does in a sort of C-3PO kind of unhelpful kind of way. Uh, then we move to Kingfly, and he's got... He runs forward 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, and he is going to, again... Edius, I guess. Um, doesn't have anything that he can do there, so he's going to just attack. Oop, hitting you. Is there anything you can do about that? I believe so. Oh, so it hits you hard. Um, fortunately, your temporary hit points absorb it, but this thing has multi attack and it hits you again. Uh, partially absorbing and then we move to the top and it's uh, Dinobrian Let us focus one of these creatures first I say as I ding the bell at the dog Yep uh, told me that. Big buzz uh, It fails and it has been wounded Cool um, So the D12 the Big D12 uh, Yes the Big one damage Swingy, swingy. Uh, is that your go? Yes, that's my go. Uh, okay. And so we move to that. And uh, I think it is... I mean, it's it's random at the moment. It's snapping. It doesn't particularly like... Um, yeah, it didn't like what you did to it. But because you put Vicious Mockery on it, it has attack at disadvantage, doesn't it? Indeed. Yeah, so it is going to try and bite you, but a disadvantage. Uh, and that is a miss. And then we move to you, Edius. I will clobber it with a big stick again. Um, this is again straight attack at the moment. Yep. Oh. And it misses. You bring it down heavily and surprisingly fast moves out of the way. Um, okay. Um, is that your go? It is. That's the big hit. Yep. And then we move to Ty. Uh, okay. Um, Ty is uh, going to uh, cast Fairy Fire. Um, All right. Okay. Get both of them in it. Yep. Without, without getting anyone else, obviously. That makes sense to me. I'm not sure about Ty now he's changed colour, but my fairy fire was a very dull grey fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, they seem to seem to not be interested in being covered in this fairy fire as they right. shake it shake it off successfully, um, dodging both it of those. Is. It is uh, enough. Right, it's it's the wrong save, but they still pass. But for some reason, it's going off dex rather than charisma. So I just changed that. Uh no, it's they oh, they, no, they have to make a dexterity saving throw. 
Yeah, but it's, it says DC 10. I'm fairly sure my spell save DC is higher. But... All right. If you're DC, if you're... Th sorry. They have to make a dexterity save, but it is against your DC. Let us have a look at what's going on there. Uh, yeah. I mean, they'd have, they'd have passed anyway, because I think it's 13. But... Yeah, yeah. Um, so your saving throw should be uh, 8 plus ability, and your ability is charisma. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, I've changed that for you. So your deck save is that. No. Cool. That's brilliant. I'll check the others when it's not my turn. Yeah. No worries. Uh, so my bonus action. Yeah. Um, I am going to use my one use of face step. Oop. So you'll see uh, the ice uh, spreads up uh, Ty's feet, almost kind of cocooning him. Uh, before it shatters and he appears back here. Very uh, nice. You've gone off the screen. Yeah, uh, ice goes up and then shatters and he is back within the uh, uh, in there. So yeah, that's his bonus action. So that's both. That's me. Perfect. Uh, and then we move to. Oh, uh, watch out there, sir. And then he is going. Oh, did, did we? No, we still haven't got the. Uh, we haven't got the extra hit points coming every turn this time, have we? No, you haven't. No, and it's making a big difference. Strangely, <laughs> uh, but that is a miss, and a second attack is a hit, as it heavily wounds you this time. And then we move to uh, Dino Brian. Uh, I will toll the bell once more. Actually, yep. Yeah, I will do that. I will toll the dice. Uh, fails. Slightly better this time. Twice as powerful as it was before. Was he done? Yep. Was it the critical failure? So uh, save two versus DC 13. Yes. So, yeah, roll another D20. Very nice. Um, then it doesn't like that, so it will kind of move down. And it will target you uh, with the bite this time. Oh, and hit. You notice know, this creature's bite is quite nasty. And then we move to Edius. And I shall hit it again. Oh, swinging wildly. It is a miss. Uh, no bardic inspirations or anything like that on you? I don't believe so. I, I two, used all up last last no, week. Last no. two, two twelves and a thirteen, yeah. and I was hoping it was a thirteen to hit, but no, it's not a thirteen to hit. Not a thirteen to hit. <laughs> it's very close, but it's not a thirteen. Let me move to tie. Um, I will um, once again uh, shout, and and don't think I've come back over here because I'm scared. It's just that your breath is horrific, <laughs> and he will. Uh, target Big Buzz and cast Vicious Mockery. Um, although I think the DC's off on this one as well, but... Uh, yeah. But 19's going to save either save, way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is uh, not worried about that. And then we move to... It's going to do the same thing again. Uh, but miss you with the first attack. I miss you with the second attack as it swings wildly, and we move to Dinobrian. I never told the dead. Yeah. That's another fail. Is that another critical fail? Uh, it probably is, but that is enough to take it down. <laughs> um, and that is dead. Uh, you see that... Uh, King Fly Slime is very upset about his uh, pet being destroyed. Um, is that your go? Uh, anything else you wanted to do? 
uh, I will move around to here. Okay. That's been done. Cool. And then we move to Idios. I think I shall change targets. Yep, good idea. You hit this time, and that is a critical hit. It's armor class being 14. And you... I think I shall re roll three of those if that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't blame you at all. So we've got a 5 to take away uh, and a 12 to add. So that is a 7 to add. Boom. Doing some serious damage there now. That and you... because I did a critical, I can use my Great Weapon Master feet to attack again. Is it against the same target? What's, um, what's I the believe on it? so. Let us find that out. It might be when you critically hit, you can uh, uh, swing again. On your turn, when you score a critical hit with a melee weapon, you can make one melee act weapon attack as a bonus action. Yeah, sweet. Go for it. Swing again. Coming right up. Uh, yeah, that is a automatic miss. Oh dear, that is a natural one. Um, so, narrative agency, what do you want to do with this critical miss? There's no one about. Do you want to lose your weapon for a round? Do you want to damage yourself? Do you want to open yourself up so that the creature's got advantage on its next attack against you? I think I'll. Uh, I think I'll. I'll lose my weapon. Uh, you sure. Uh, one thing I will remind you, I don't know, you've been very generous with your um, with your subs and everything else. Have you got any hap left? Could you... Reaction point, well, you I could, suppose you could use this, this it. would be an opportunity to, uh, to, 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 to cash in that retweet. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's it's up to you, but I mean... Uh, I, I, shall, I shall take that kind offer. Yeah, so spend your hat point. And yeah. let us see if we can turn that, that critical turn failure. That one, turn that frown upside down. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. That's okay. So it's, yeah, it's not a critical miss. You turn it into a hit. Wow, heroically. Yes, that's what they're there for. And oh, with wow. action. Uh, and that's, <laughs> that was a devastating... Uh, nice. A devastating yeah. <laughs> fourteen points that, of that, damage. That was very heroic and, and actionful. I yeah. feel uh, I feel like I got full value for that. Absolutely. Uh, Thank then you. We, then we move to Ty. What are you doing? Um, I will see that, that this thing has kind of hit the dirt, and I will go oh, and <laughs> uh, and I will still holding my torch. I will <laughs> try to lean down and light it or hit okay. it. Okay. Damn you. Okay, it's a it's an automatic action. I was hoping that you might forget about that in the excitement of the critical hit. <laughs> but you douse it with fire so it can't regenerate. And you have successfully uh, successfully dealt uh, with these, these final guardians uh, to the gardens. Um, it doesn't take much as kind of well done, well done. You look you look are you okay? Your sap is leaking from your body. <laughs> uh, um, mm. uh, yeah, yes. Uh, well, some... I think uh I think as much as uh, I didn't have action surge on, on the character sheet, I don't have second wind on the character sheet, but it might be the time where uh Using of the second wind happens in preemptive fashion. Um, yeah, you can uh, you can do that if you want. We can we can add another power to you anyway. I think that might have happened when we were because uh, I, I think Edius was the character I managed to just copy over using uh, fantasy grounds. Mm -hmm. so maybe, maybe that this. didn't work very well. Okay, sorry, what was that? What was you doing? I'm beginning to trust this pappy, um, flabby puffballs. Not like uh, pathetic could be evil. Oh, no, no, I, I mean, uh, I, 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 we we revere Lux, Luxia. Um, 
uh, I, I, I do not mean you any harm. I do not wish you to be uh, uh, compost. Uh, you a god of pacism. Uh, wow. Well, we, we, we believe in, in life of, of all forms, e even, even things that are uh, so terrifying ugly as all of you. No. Um, ter but in interestingly, that kind of comes across as, as a little bit of a compliment in, in Frost Giant. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so, so he just is, is getting mixed messages here. Yeah. It doesn't mean it as an insult, you know. Anyway, he's, he doesn't understand how the language is communicating with emotions. Um, I'm a sword five. So, uh, we still must be careful, but uh, we have we have made a, a, an entrance. They will perhaps find the remains of of these, but uh, we can cover our tracks. Um, and he kind of wobbles forward, little spores coming from him as he kind of wobbles forward. Well, I suppose uh, uh, onwards then uh, is okay. As you kind I of get to, if, you do collapse, if I if I can use really... if I can use that that second win to get a D10 plus two hit points back, that will yeah probably uh, I think because it'll come back at a short rest. So I'll do that. Yeah, rather Go. than get caught out. Go for it. Five hit points back, please. Mm-hmm. Superb. Uh, so, Ty, when you get to there, uh, can you give me a perception roll? Certainly. Yeah. In this area just north where where this king fly slime, uh, just this area here, uh, was residing, you see amongst all of the fungi sort of growing things glinting in your torchlight it seems that um items of maybe value have been abandoned here as they have um, taken control of or captured or destroyed things trying to enter the gardens um and there is a whole pile of various items. Uh, which... My word, everyone, um, uh, I think, things might be looking up. It would appear that this strange creature had some riches. Uh, I, I shall move forward and, and uh, attempt to uh, see what's in there. Okay, so if you want to open up the party sheet, um you can go to the inventory and there is a whole host of various bits and pieces primarily coin uh, but some strangely different shaped mushrooms um, now the mushrooms uh you're not sure of uh, but then there's some other items of worth as well. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so anybody can open up the party sheet and start having a look at what is going on there. So we've got some vestments, a chalice, a mirror, a couple of potions and some unidentified things. Mm -hmm. are, are indeed the unidentified things all of the mushroom variety? Uh, appear to be, yes. I mean, it should just say fungus, maybe. It, it just says yeah. an identified item. Yeah, so there should be three yeah. unidentified items, all of which are different types of mushroom. Um, we, we have one ident unidentified item, two unidentified items, and three unidentified items. Yeah. And and they, they all so there are like, six in total, I think. Yeah, they 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 all look um, 
kind of like different types of mushroom, different sort of colours upon them. Um, but they have been stacked, cut, um, maybe a special stash of something. Uh, I will look at our our uh, our guide, mm -hmm. and I will sort of gesture. Hey, would you uh, have any ideas what these are? Uh, 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 kind of comes across, and but but yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, this here is a uh, blue cap. Uh, this here is uh, Nilhog's nose mushroom. Mm. And this here is ripple bark. And he then spends some time describing what they do. Uh, blue cap is known as the grain of shadowless. It's inedible itself but the spores can be ground to make a nutritious flour uh, bread made from blue cap, cap flour is known as spore bread or blue bread um, so it, it is it is good to consume for you fleshy things uh, uh, this one here is Nilhog's nose mushrooms and Nilhog's nose is a small mushroom that grants anybody who eats it great wisdom uh, for a number of hours. However, um, you uh, uh, it is pungent and you will your the lumps on the front of your face do not function as well. Oh. And then this ripple bark is, uh, um, it looks kind of like your flesh that is rotting, um, uh, but it is, uh, uh, it can be consumed, and whilst it can be eaten raw, it, well, you fleshy types prefer to roast it. Oh, uh, sounds delightful. Uh, well, it seems very useful, and there's some quite quite beautiful things here as well. This mirror is lovely. Well, I mean, we have no use of such things. Uh, I mean, feel free if it is of use to you. Uh, it is yours to take. Uh, yeah. And he kind of backs away. He's, he's obviously not not interested or has no need of any of those things. Uh, I think kind of pokes the cloth of gold vestments. Mm -hmm. Are they matching pair of clothing? Do they denote some kind of god or are they just nice clothes? Uh, they're just nice clothes, really. Um, you think that they they might um, might mm. be connected to the church of Sune, the goddess of beauty. Um, but they, they're worth, they're worth some money, some coin, uh, but don't have any sort of magical, uh, power within them. Well, I mean, I, I, I'd quite like one of these mirrors, if that's okay with you chaps. Uh, absolutely, absolutely delightful. By all means. Oh, wonderful. If you click on the brown shield with the silver dot, um, it um, tells you what they do so you can have a better look at uh, Ripple Bark, Nilhog's Nose, and Blue Cap. Um, but it does look like it might help you uh, with your food and your resources. I imagine there are many things down here. Um, Dino Prince says, glancing at all the fungi of extra. That could cause one to um, make a, um, a saving throw against such things. This could be a poison chalice, this nose mushroom. Well, well let's hope that uh, uh, that doesn't happen and uh, that this, this, uh, uh, this indeed chalice is not poisoned. Ah! <laughs> yeah. uh, uh. Indeed. 
feel the two of you um, would be far better suited owners for the uh, the vestments than I. Oh. I prefer my um, these are a little bit gaudy. Aye, but yeah, you think so? I think they're quite fetching, actually. Yes, I think I will take some. Yes. Take take both. Oh. Take take one and a spare, and 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 you. You done, Brian. Take the chalice. I suppose it's always good to have a, a spare uh, robe in case we meet someone important, you know, want to make a good impression. The, uh, the, the food stuffs, um, do we, do we have a party cook? I feel that, uh, the riffle bark is, is the, the is edible, but it can be roasted. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the blue cap is is more an ingredient. Uh, well, you can use it to make bread from. You kind of get the spores out, and then you make bread from the spores. Uh, yeah. So you you would you would perhaps need to process it a little bit. I'm not an expert cook, but I'd be willing to give it a go. Take take the food, and we'll try and. Uh process it um we, we have enough rations for now but would you uh each take some of the ripple bark mm, um, certainly unless you're feeling um down loaded in which case i have obviously uh a pack that can help carry yeah yeah I'm stronger than i look <laughs> yeah Ambassador, am, uh, is, is this coin of any use here? Uh, no, uh, no, even uh, even us worshippers of Luxia um, do not use such things, and neither do uh, the worshippers of Zugti Moy. Uh, uh, there is there is no need. The uh, the slaves that are possessed by the spores of Zukti may require no payment. Um, so uh, take them if you have use of them. Aye, but well, I mean, it seems these sh- these coins are heavy. <laughs> it seems a shame we... lying around there, doesn't it? I mean, uh... it does. Shall we? Shall we take them for now and and discard them if we find ourselves overburdened uh, yes certainly it seems like a good idea uh, i mean e- e- equal splits uh, sound good yeah i think so yes very good uh so you split them between just the, yourselves just the mushroom then uh, are you going to carry the do you want to carry a, does anyone else want to carry the blue cap or shall i just carry it yeah, go for it. I'll take them. Uh, with the uh, the one that makes you uh, particularly wise, uh, Don Abram, does that seem uh, uh, up your street? Uh, to be honest, I do not normally look for anything with the taste of smell. Um... There's also these uh, these uh, glass potion uh, bo- bottles with, with liquid in it. Probably that has been more than my area of expertise. Yes, I think you should. Uh, why don't you take those? No, I'll tell you what. I'll take this nose mushroom. Why don't you take the the potions? Uh, Andy, giving the potions a very quick glance with a knowledge of herbalism. Yeah. Would I recognise them as being healing potions, or are they a little bit more mysterious? Uh, I mean, you would be ninety nine percent without a roll that they are probably healing potions. But give us a herbalism roll. Um, you know, just a quick smell and look and a little bit of a taste. You're fairly convinced that they are potions of healing, but... I know there's that potion which is, looks like a healing potion, but yep. it does the opposite. Exactly. Um, uh, that's the last thing you want when you are desperate for healing is take something that causes you damage. Uh, yeah, uh, it seems that you've got a feeling was right and they are indeed actually two potions of healing. Uh, in this case, I suggest um, you two take the potions. 
I have the ability to heal, and you do do not. Uh, I think I maybe, wish. maybe Edius, you should possibly take both because I, I can heal as well. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Ah, well, I shan't say no. <laughs> well, wonderful. Uh, and it's well, I mean. This journey has been close to four months from start, and this is the uh, very first time that you've come across anything of any value. So it's oh, there were some lovely wolf corpses. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, you could probably have skinned them and taken them back for uh, treasure. But fair enough. I think we'd have missed all the fun. Yeah, it's been a short campaign. Indeed. So uh, with that. Uh, it does take you a little while to gather and sort all of that out. Uh, and whilst it's all going on, uh, Flabby is kind of moving around, kind of a little bit sort of nervously, keeping an eye out. And uh, he kind of, come, we, we must, we must, uh, we must uh, be careful, but also hurry. Hurry, careful, careful, hurry. Yes, well... Uh... I think we've uh, we've uh, recovered everything that we were uh, that was here. Uh, I think yes, uh, uh, we, uh, a careful hurry onwards. Then. Okay, it is quite a distance, but I know uh, safish paths. Uh, we go to the small settlement of Luxia, and there. You will see other fleshy uh, things like yourselves, ones we have been able to uh, save. They, though, are not as, um, as uh, violent, no, uh, strung. Uh, no, no, violent was right. Uh, as you. Uh, uh, so, with that, he kind of poddles off. Uh, he's, he's not moving particularly fast, and every so often there's a nervous explosion of sort of spores around him. Okay, uh, so uh, it seems that you've got a guide, another guide, uh, that is uh, taking you... Uh, through um, you descend down a little bit further and then the you, you basically make your way through these foothills through a gorge through the mountains and eventually you begin to move to a place that opens up into this massive valley um, and as you kind of emerge from it you can see that these mountains tower up and because of this they, they, they form this kind of circular barrier and because they are so high it seems that whilst it is open to the sky still and you can see it that the sun barely reaches down into this um, into this massive crater um, and again it's full of sort of different types of fungi of different sizes and shapes some bio illuminescent uh, some not you can see that various things are moving through um, one thing that you can definitely notice is moving from southwest to northeast is this amazing kind of rift in the ground that seems to descend down into the shadowless itself. Um, you see that there are kind of large spore-like creatures that are flying around and some very large shambling type uh, vegetation that rise above the canopies of this um, fungal garden. It is a sight to behold. It's also damp, but also humid here. And you can see that occasionally dotted about this 
strange uh, landscape. There are geysers of hot water that are spurting up into the air, kind of almost acting as some kind of, um, not dehumidifier, but actually humidifier as it brings down this warm kind of probably mineral rich kind of mist into the garden itself. Uh, it kind of says this way, this way and begins to lead you down. The journey is quite long. This crater substantially larger than it actually looks. At one point you have to cross this huge rift and you see that there are so many types of fungi that have grown up from the shadowless up the sides of this rift and it's kind of where this uh, uh, this infection as if like this was a gaping wound uh, in the skin and disease has kind of moved out this fungal growth has come from the shadowless itself relatively easy to cross you are led even deeper uh, into sort of a very dark um, area of this this gardens of Shidakla uh, dark because of the canopies of the mushrooms so close together now uh, your dark vision coming in useful if you've got it if not using whatever light you have after a while this has taken you a, a good number of hours and you are getting very tired now you also incredibly hot it's so humid here and you've been used you're wearing clothes that are used to the freezing cold so you are sweating buckets you see in the distance a blue light and it's at this point your guide says we are close that is the light of looks here it is difficult to find unless you know where to look uh, our settlement is hidden and and we watch and we try and do our best uh, it is perhaps not long to the blooming and uh, it will be bad for your world and us worshippers of Luxia uh, for it to take place it would strengthen strengthen her and that would be bad for the world uh, whatever this tempest this red tempest is going to affect the bright the blooming coming straight afterwards would mean all would be lost uh, he moves it moves forward and you uh, you begin to see uh, this strange numbers of sort of spherical mushrooms in this beautiful blue light I'll just share this image with you as you begin to move closer to the the settlement of Luxia and as you arrive you see that there are many different fungal types of uh, sentient creatures moving around. You also see that amongst them, there are a very small number of flesh bags of humanoids, travelers that uh, gave up everything to move to the gardens and have found themselves in this terrible predicament and i think that is the perfect point to leave it till next session as you get to see what you can do see whether you can save or whether you want to save these these travelers uh, see if you can uncover more information about the blooming or this red tempest 
lots of things to do lots of things to think about thank you very much players uh hope you enjoyed that and thank you very much everybody in chat for taking part and watching as well uh tomorrow night we will be doing ionia and then on sunday we will be doing shadowless so please come along and join us then in the meantime if we don't see you have an amazing weekend and hopefully i will catch you very soon take care everybody yes.